Hey guys, Robert here, surveying with Robert. Hey, today I wanna to introduce you to the Trimble S-Series robot. So robotic total stations are pretty unique. I'm pretty fond of the Trimble S-Series robots. Um, when it comes to, to surveying, I guess I'm kind of old school. Uh, there's nothing like turning an angle and shooting a distance. I don't know, something satisfying about it as far as surveying, right? GPS is cool, but GPS can get you everywhere. A lot of people use GPS where they shouldn't, and in my opinion, they should be using a robotic total station. Um, GPS is a one-size-fits-all. A, um, a robotic total station or a total station is, uh, it does everything a surveyor needs. It'll turn a precise angle, uh, it'll shoot a precise distance, it can even, in most cases, give you a precise elevation. So today I just kind of want to talk to you a little bit about the Trimble S-Series robots and kind of go through a couple of features that maybe some of you guys that, that already own robots are not familiar with. So uh, check this out. Let me get this set up. We'll roll. Okay, some of the features that I'd like to show you um, on this robot, uh, one of them in particular is uh, this screen right here. So on the screen, you can actually set up the level on it. So uh, when you first turn it on, you have an option, and here's the power button. So you have an option when you first turn it on, you'll see it on the front, it'll uh, tell you that it's waiting for a connection. So, but the first thing you can do is go in and set up and level this thing. So let's get it turned back on. Okay, splash screen has came up. So what we're gonna do, splash screen goes away. You can hear it making kind of some connection noises. And now we're in, it says select mode, set up or level. So what we wanna do is hit the enter, which is the far right key right here. We're gonna hit that. It's gonna say starting. So what it's gonna do when it gets into here is I'm actually gonna be able to see the bullseye bubble, the level on this screen. So I'm off just a hair so I can adjust it, looking at that. So I don't need the data collector sitting here with me to be able to level this thing. That's a misconception some people have. I can use this screen to level it. And I've got different scales. So right now I'm at one and 250. If I keep hitting this down arrow, I'll go through the scales. There's one in 100 one in 10 and one in one. And let me tell you what, at one in one, if you breathe hard on this thing, it's gonna move. So that's one of the things I wanted to uh, to bring up to you guys. So I'm back to one in 250. I'm just gonna go ahead and level it real quick so we can use it. Woo. Even at one in 250, it's a little sensitive. So. Uh, that's one of the things I want to show you guys. Another thing is there's two different ways to measure your HI on this thing. One way is to use this bottom a notch and the other way is to use the true height. I typically always use the true height uh, up here. This is designed for you to hook a tape in and measure down to your point. Um, these knobs on the side, so this is your, your focus knob. This should be your vertical, this should be your horizontal. So as we turn the knobs, you'll notice the scope rotate up, rotate down. Because it's not friction, because everything about this gun, there's no friction in it, you can really finite move this gun with these knobs if you want to. Uh, the faster you turn the knobs, the faster it turns. One of the things that I think that um, is pretty neat about these guns that really drives people crazy, and that's this optical plummet. So this optical plummet is what I call a push me, pull me. So you push it in, pull it out, and then to get the parallax out of it, you actually twist the knob right here and that focuses the crosshairs. So I've seen people fight with this. It's actually pretty funny sometimes. So uh, a couple other features about the gun. One is this is a track light. When you get into like the S7, this is actually a camera. So when this is turned on, it will flash red on one side, green on the other. Um, of course, you got two barrel sights down here, one top, one bottom, just like most instruments. You have two communication ports down here. So these can be used for different things. I can hook a cable up to a, um, 
to a data collector if I need to. Um, there's also a port for a battery if I wanted to. This thing has a six hour. Um, that's originally what it's rated for. These batteries now are a little bit bigger. Here's the battery port on the side. So um, these batteries were originally rated for six hours. The new batteries actually last a little bit longer now. Uh, they redesigned the batteries for the SX10, and the same batteries that fit the S7, the SX10, uh, also fit this S5, by the way. So they're all, all the robots are shipping with bigger batteries now. You got a 2.4 gigahertz radio up here on top. Um, if you'll notice, this is offset, so you could actually look straight vertical if you wanted to. Um, you've got this little display screen. All this is really for is for information, for connectivity, things like that. Uh, set up the Bluetooth, through the level like I was talking about, change the uh, radio stations and things of that nature. So um, we actually calibrate and um, repair these instruments at the office. So if there's ever anything wrong, you can send it down to Lafayette and they can fix it for you. Um, pretty good little instruments, I really like it. So uh, let's take it for a test drive. Let's, uh, let's set this thing up and see what we can do with it. Okay, so what we're gonna look at now um, is the performance of the gun. Also one of the big things I wanna show you, this is an active tracking gun. So I wanna be able to show you what uh, the difference is between active and tracking. So what I've got here, I've got two prisms set up. I've got the multi-track prism and I have the standard 360 prism. So what we're going to do right now, I'm going to go in here to joystick and I'm going to turn this instrument to where it's looking a little bit towards me and I'm going to hit search. So right now, I don't have it set up on the um, multi-track prism. I've just got it set up on a standard prism. So let's see what it finds. Okay, so it's locked onto a prism. I don't know which one. Apparently it's not my multi-track. This is the one I'm wanting it to lock on. No target. Target locked. Hear that? It's actually locked on my 360 prism, not my multi-track prism. This is what happens to you with an active track prism versus a passive tracking. Right now we're in passive tracking mode. We're fixing to flip it over to active tracking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here to the screen. We're gonna go in. I'm gonna change this prism to VX S series multi-track. Now it's gonna ask me for a target ID. I'm gonna use target ID one, except, now watch what happens. It's no longer locked on to my instrument. So now if I go search, searching, and it's searching for target ID one. I haven't turned it on up here yet, so it's looking for a prism. And it's not finding one. It's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, as you can see, and it's not finding an active track prism. So what do we want to do? I'm going to cancel that right now, just so you can see. So what I want to do, I'm going to turn that on number Target one. Locked. Bam, did you hear that? Target locked. Just as soon as I turn that on. Now, if I turn it back off. No target. No target, okay. Turn it back on. Target's locked. No target. Target locked. So now if I say search. Searching. Let's see which one it finds. Target ID one locked. Okay, so it's locked on target ID one. Okay. So now if I take this prism, which we'll notice. Target locked. It's locked under this prism. If I take this prism. No target. No target. It's target. telling me no target. Target locked. No target. Target locked. No target. Let's put it in tracking mode. Target locked. Now you can see it shooting a distance. I'm gonna put this prism out front. No target. Target locked. 91 point, say 92 feet. No target. Target locked. 92 feet. And I'm good six inches no in front target. of this prism. Target locked. 
92 feet. So as you can see, it's not locking on this other prism no matter what I do. There are cases where I have seen where it will like, it'll lock on to its reflection in a mirror or uh, not really a mirror, but like in a, a window, like you're up close to a building with a shiny surface, it will lock onto this ID on that uh, reflection in a window. You know, sometimes you just have to be careful with what you're doing. It's not, maybe it's not 100% perfect, but it is awfully dang close. So uh, if you were out, you had objects around you, if you had on a uh, reflective vest, if you had, anything like that going on, you use this, this multi-track prism on here, this active tracking system, it's only gonna lock onto you. Very, very, very rare cases. Like I said, the only thing I can think of is like maybe you're up against a building where um, you know it's picking up the reflection. Uh, it might lock onto it. I, I have seen some rare cases of that, but that is far and few between. You can get out there and work all day with this multi-track and not have any issues. You get out there with this standard 360 prism you could lock onto a stop sign, and I know you guys have done it, take 50 shots, and you got 50 shots on the stop sign. So anyways, I just wanted to show you guys how this worked with this robot, this S5. Um, pretty interesting piece of equipment. Um, I love the robots. I love this robot. It works great. So um, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to um, try to uh, answer any questions you have. I'm gonna do some other stuff with some um, integrated surveying and uh, also the geolock feature in this robot and these data collectors. So you guys stay tuned. And as always, I'll catch you in this video. Be careful, don't hurt yourself. Don't. I, I heard today on Facebook, I saw something about uh, a surveyor in Texas maybe got hit by traffic. You guys be careful out there, man, it's dangerous. Dangerous work working on the side of the road. Be careful, don't get hurt. Watch my video, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. See you guys next video. Thanks, man. Appreciate you guys watching.